everybody, and welcome to a new chapter of this podcast, Barcelona Guide, a podcast created to help you in your visit to Barcelona. I am Jose Gómez, the founder of Looking Barcelona, a company where I provide tours to discover the city. And last chapter, we talk about my favorite tapas that you can find in Barcelona. And today, we'll talk about my favorite starters in, in, starters in Spanish cuisine. Later, in another chapter, I will do another podcast around my favorite main courses and more and later, another one for my favorite desserts. So, if you are a foodie, you will find it very interesting. Of course, all of these dishes that I will tell you about are typical from Spain and of course you can find all of them in Barcelona. Barcelona restaurants as well. But Spain, Spain is a country with a rich cuisine, a country with a huge variety of products. We have a wide diversity of climates and landscape, high mountains, seas, gardens. In the south of the country, tropical climates. In the north, it can be hot and humid with rain. And dry and wind in the center of the country. And here in Spain also, we have been very much influenced by many civilizations. For example, Romans, Arabs, Phoenicians, people from Northern Europe, and French as well, and Portuguese. And in the last 30 years, people from Africa, South America, China, India, so have also come here and introduced new foods that today are totally integrated into our kitchens. So our kitchen is the result of a mix of cultures and You have to add to all these mixtures of cultures a very good quality products and excellent extra virgin olive oil and wine, vegetables, meat, fish, cheese and so on. In fact, extra virgin olive oil is the base of our kitchen. Almost all of our dishes has a base of olive oil. In fact, Spain is the most important producer of olive oil in the world. Mainly all of our olive oil is produced, is produced in Andalucía. Andalucía is a region in the south of Spain where you can see oceans of olive trees, millions of olive trees. Personally, I know very well this region because my father was from there and I go very often. I have a, I have a house there and family as well and friends. My parents have used an excellent olive oil always at home. And I have to tell you something. I love cooking. For me, eating is a trip in, its, in itself. Well, I mean, when I travel, I love to visit food markets and to learn everything about recipes and food, and of course, taste all I can. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready, we can start with my favorite starters. I will leave you written, writing the name of all these dishes in the notes of this podcast, because some of them could be difficult to remember for you. And the first one, ladies and gentlemen, is salmorejo. And this is one of my favorite dishes. It is typical of Córdoba. Córdoba is a city in Andalusia, in the south of the country. And it is eaten mainly in summer when tomatoes are in his best period. Because tomato is the main ingredient of salmorejo. Actually, this appetizer reminds me of my childhood. My father was from Andalusia and, as I told you earlier, and we often made it at home. My mother used to prepare salmorejo at home. And it is like a cold and red cream. It is similar than gazpacho. We talk about gazpacho in the chapter dedicated to my favorite tapas. Gazpacho is a cold soup of raw vegetables like tomatoes, onion, garlic, green and red pepper, cucumber, olive oil, 
salt, and a little bread. A little bit of bread. All ingredients are chopped up, blended, and then strained. The result is a drink that turns out to be an explosion of vitamins. So, salmorejo is more a puree, is thicker than gazpacho and creamer in texture, made with tomatoes, bread, garlic and olive oil, and maybe garnished to decorate it with small pieces of ham. It can be eaten with bread. Salmorejo was traditionally taken by peasants working in the countryside. And now another started, and the name is ajo blanco. That means white garlic. If you see ajo on the menu, it is garlic, and blanco, of course, is white. It is considered as a starter or an appetizer. It is also called white gazpacho. It is a delicious cold soup. It is made of almonds, bread, garlic, vinegar, and salt, and all very well ground. And it is typical of Malaga in the south of Spain as well, the city where Picasso was born. Ajo blanco can be served with grapes. And now, tortilla de patatas, the translation is Spanish omelette. Don't think of the Mexican bread. It's another thing completely different. Tortilla de patatas is an omelette of potatoes. It is, it is like, it, I mean, this is one of those dishes that are different in each place that you try them. There are people who like the egg a little bit liquid, others like the egg very cooked. Some people like it with onions, others with no onions. You can also, you can also find tortilla that are stuffed with pieces of chorizo, zucchini in America and vegetables and so on. So tortilla de patatas is a Spanish omelette. So tortilla de patata goes very well with pa am tomacat. Let me, let me talk to you about that. What is that? What is pa am tomacat? That means bread rub with tomato. People from Barcelona, we are crazy about that. If you are in a restaurant, you can order pa am tomacat. Listen that. This is, this is, this bread can be eaten at breakfast or anytime, a company with ham or cheese or whatever, really. How to prepare it? Take a slice of bread, which may or may not be toasted, rub it with a glove of garlic and tomato, and then a sprinkle of olive oil, and if you want, a little bit of salt as well. It's a total experience. And now comes guisantes con jamón. That means peas with ham. Peas is in a exquisite vegetable, sweet and very tender. This recipe carries some of the most typical ingredients of a Spanish cuisine. Ham, garlic, olive oil, and three tablespoons of dry sherry wine. Firstly, fry the garlic and the slices of ham in, in the olive oil. Then, put the peas already cooking. Then, add the wine and let it cook for five minutes. You can also include boiled or eggs and some fresh mint leaves. The mint is a garnish that gives flavor. And now comes escalivada. That means roast, roasted vegetable salad. The ingredients are onions, red peppers, and aubergines or eggplant wrapped in aluminum foil and then put in the oven for two hours. It is served with a dash of olive oil and with pa and tomacat. And also, I love esquechada de bacalao. It's a very typical starter as well. Bacalao is cut. Actually, it's a salad of shredded cut with very fine red peppers and black olives. We use black olives from Aragon. They are very small olives, but with a very intense flavor. 
dissolved coat, dissolved coat is used. Here in Spain, we have many, many recipes with cod. Personally, I love all of them. You can find cod in supermarket or food markets, and it is and it is conserved in salt. So, if you want if you want to cook it, you have to immerse cod in water some days in order to eliminate all this salt, and you have to change the water regularly. So you can also see as starters in restaurants a, a great variety of salads. The most typical are Catalan salad. It is a salad accompanying, accompanied with slices of local and delicious sausages, as ham, salami, chorizo, and bull negra. Bull negra is a delicious Catalan sausage. Another typical salad is in ensalada mixta. It means mixed, mixed salad. This is one of the most popular salads made with let lettuce, tomato, olives, tuna, asparagus, boiled potatoes and anchovies. Also, the green salad is very popular. It is a, it's a very simple and popular salad made with lettuce, tomato and peppers. So don't forget that we Spaniards love dressing the salad with lots of olive oil, a bit of vinegar and salad. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and please tell me something. You can write me, send me an email or if you want that you can tell me that I can talk about in the future in other chapters. Tell me something. I left, I left you my email in the notes of the podcast. Bye and don't forget to be happy.